Shalom. All praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Racha Kodash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well and labor in the word and doctrine. Shalom, meaning peace. May that be unto the elect of the nation of Israel. We're going to go through, you know, Isaiah 61 and 62, prophesying the return of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach and the coming kingdom and the downfall of this wicked man's wicked system with the Hebrew Israelites. First, we're going to get into some news, some recent articles, and filter it through the scriptures. Right? Now, this one I've just seen, and it's from Tuesday the 18th of October this year, from Sky News. Powerful explosions behind two Nord Stream gas pipeline leaks in Baltic Sea. And it reads, the Danish findings appear to be similar to those of Swedish prosecutors who said two other holes in the pipelines also seem to have been caused by explosions and the case was being investigated as an act of gross sabotage. A preliminary investigation of damage on the two Nord Stream gas pipelines in the Danish part of the Baltic Sea shows the leaks were caused by powerful explosions, Copenhagen police has said. <clears throat> the force added officers investigated the crime scenes with assistance from Denmark's armed forces and in collaboration with the Danish Security and Intelligence Agency. The agency and police have decided to set up a joint investigation group which will handle further investigation of the incidents. Copenhagen police is investigating two separate ruptures to the pipelines which were caused on 26 September. The force added on Tuesday that the extensive damage identified on the pipes on the Danish side of the Baltic Sea maritime border appeared to have been caused by powerful explosions. The findings are similar to those of Swedish prosecutors who said two of the holes in the pipelines also seem to have been caused by deliberate subsea blasts and the case was investigated as an act of gross sabotage. This is the wisdom of Solomon 12 and 1. It says, For thine incorruptible spirit is in all things so have to remember even if it's not confirmed you know it's, we can neither confirm nor deny you know the heavenly father is still shaking things up even if it's the heavenly father sending some suspicion you know some having some tensions between countries you know he's the master chess player you have to understand that that's right earlier this month the swedish domestic security agency said its preliminary investigation of the two leaks closest to its coast has strengthened the suspicions of serious sabotage. And Sweden's one of the main, main pushing points of the MOTB, man. That's right. You know, thousands of them have it. You know, yeah. that's, that's a conservative estimate. But the main thing you see all them, what do you call those countries? Scandinavia. Scandinavia. Yeah. Scandinavia. They're meant to be the happiest, you know, the most yeah. progressive society. So, of course, they're going to push the natural progression. progression which, you know, in that article the other day that you brothers did, it said it's naturally inevitable. You know, we were talking on the phone a bit earlier and just saying, you know, it's, well, it's biblically inevitable. You know, right. they're, they're continuing to push and ramp up this MOTB Haragma system, man. And we're all for it. You know, we don't support it, but we support the fact that it has to happen before the coming of the kingdom of Yahweh China. That's right, because these prophecies are, are speaking clear more so than ever now. Like I said, at the end it shall speak. And we're in the end. Even at the time of Yahweh Shai, at the time when Hebrews was written, you know, it said in these last days, so from the time Yahweh Shai ascended, you know, those who considered the last days, so how much more so now? You know, nearly 2,000 years later. That's right. Go back to the article. It reads, the four leaks in the pipelines which link Russia and Germany via the Baltic Sea have become a flashpoint in the Ukraine crisis. The leaks occurred in international waters, but within the exclusive economic zone of Denmark and Sweden. The damaged Nord Stream pipelines discharged huge amounts of methane, a potent greenhouse gas, into the air for several days. The Kremlin said on Tuesday that the international investigations into the blast were set up with the advanced intention of blaming Russia. He said, there's going to be attacks that have been carried out by Russia, but there's also going to be attacks that have been done as an inside job. That's right. You know, to blame, there's always been that in war. Yeah. It's like you have covert wars as well. All right. 
and you know it's a strategic move too because Russia you know they've been looking to you know kind of shut down the the pipeline from uh, you know which goes through is it Germany from Russia to Germany which basically gives Europe all of its gas you know because it was Biden that shut off said oh no we're not taking any more Russian fuel mm. you know but they never planned that in in advance they did it at the moment they didn't stock up if you were to really think about it and plan right we're going to cut off Russia you'd at least think right let's store up some over here you know monkey branching monkey branching of the, the oil you know like a modern uh, harlot will not necessarily cut away a man she'll wait until she's got another one you know that's what Mr. Biden should have done they should have said, right, this supply, we're going to cut them off, but first let's secure, you know, so there's not a big economic uh, impact. But it's all by design, man. Right. So you can't have small or great, rich or poor, and no middle class. You know, you've got rich, poor, and you've got them in the middle. You can't have a middle if it's been destroyed. You know, and the, the, the middle class needs to be destroyed in order for prophecy to progress. Said, the Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said elementary logic showed the pipeline damage was a blow to Russia's interests. He said the investigation was being conducted secretively and without Moscow's involvement. Sweden's security services said this month they had seized material from the site of the explosion after concluding their investigation. <coughs> Danish police could not say when their investigation is expected to be concluded still too early to say anything about the framework under which the international cooperation with example Sweden and Germany will run as it depends on several factors so he said meanwhile Swedish newspaper Expressen has reported that a section measuring at least 50 meters is missing from the ruptured Nord Stream 1 gas pipeline in the Baltic Sea after filming what it said were the first publicly released images of the damage the images captured at a depth of roughly 80 meters show bent metal and a wide open pipeline in murky waters at the bottom of the Baltic Sea. Parts of the pipeline appear to have straight, sharp edges while others were deformed, the footage shows. The video was filmed on Monday, the newspaper said, and world leaders have called the ruptures an act of sabotage, while Moscow has sought to pin the blame on the West, suggesting the United States stood to gain. Washington has denied any involvement. Of course. <laughs> you know, and this is all an internal conflict. Of course, there's two sides of the, you know, the third war, but they're all the same nation. You know, so they're in, if that's how they go on it against themselves, it, it shouldn't be a surprise how they treat the other nations, especially us. This is Syrac chapter 7, verse 12. Devise not a lie against thy brother, neither do, neither do the like to thy friend. So they're meant to be brothers. You know, they're of the same nation, the same house. They're meant to be united in coming against us. You know, but the Lord has really created a, a, a um, dissension between them and a disconnect to the point that they're going to go to war. You know, and the Heavenly Father, as they say, the, the King's heart is in the hand of the Heavenly Father. He turneth it with us wherever he will. That's right. So however the Lord sees fit to use these you know, rulers or puppet rulers, because the elites are really in control behind the scenes, our well, purpose is to use them for his plan, is how it will go down. There's another article, uh, quite humorous actually, it's from ITV News. The headline reads, four arrested after animal rebellion milk protest at Norwich, Spark, uh, Norwich Marks and Spencer. This is from the uh, 16th of October, Sunday. And uh, Reads, Pre uh, protesters pour milk out in the Marks and Spencer store in Norwich. Animal rebellion protesters have poured milk onto the floor in shops across the country. <laughs> yeah, it showed them. That's yeah. images of them. Well, animals of them doing it. Yeah. You know, that's, that's just inconveniencing people on minimum wage, really. That's right. You know, people think they're making a big, a big stand, a big statement. <laughs> and where's it, where's it written about... Um, them that are commanding them to abstain from meats lawfully and are able to be received. Because I'm assuming that there are you know, some radical vegan protesters that are against that. I doubt they're against the milk industry, not against the animal industry. You know, but is, it, is there an, an, an unethical way you know, that they're going about it in terms of the conditions and everything? You know, yeah, 
because it's the devil in rulership. You know, but is killing an animal and eating their flesh inherently wrong? No, not according to the scriptures. And that's what we stand upon. That's right. I think it might be Acts 15 and 29. No, no, that's no. about the... There's about the, in the last days it should come. I'm thinking it's in Peter, but I couldn't find it there. What do you say? Um, commanding abstain, if you put. Commanding abstain. But that's the thing, everyone, like it says, there was no, there was no king over Israel in them days. And every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Now we have a king, we have our king, the heavenly father, ultimately Yahweh, the king of terrors. We have his son, the king Yahweh Shai, you know, the king of kings. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrine of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which Yahweh hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Right, so chicken, steak, you know, but many there's many clean animals. They're right. just the staples. Pretty much everyone around the world, you know, eats that. Bar like Hindus and stuff. Yeah, everyone eats chicken. Everyone eats chicken. Somehow that got stigmatized and put on Jake. You know, the whole world eats chicken. You know, that's a clean meat. If anyone's saying you can't eat chicken, you know they're going off. And that's the thing, everyone's going on in their own, you know, delusion and their own opinion. An evil opinion has overthrown their judgment. How many right. are deceived by their own vain opinion and evil suspicion have, over, have overthrown their judgment? They've even made their own vain opinion the truth to them as well. That's, yeah, their, that's, that's the doctrine. Exactly. You know, and that's, you have vegan, you know, the, the equivalent of vegan preachers. You know, and that's them, carry, that's them holding camp. Doing, doing some crazy shit yeah but they won't get condemned for causing physical harm you know to people's businesses and fair enough all right you cause physical harm to animals all right but that's lawful you know but we'll preach the word and we'll get condemned you know but there is no condemnation to them that are in Hamashai, Yahweh Shai. first five first Timothy four verse five uh, Sorry, verse 4, for every creature of Yahweh, Ba'asham Yahweh Shai, is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Now, that doesn't mean you can eat pork. You know, it's in the context of lawfully. You know, not, what does it say exactly? Which of. Uh, sorry, the one um, just above a bit. Right, to the, which the Most High didn't create. So the Most High didn't create pork or swine, you know, to be received with thanksgiving. So it's within that context. So you always have to read in context. That's something we get called out on apparently you know but we read it in context we'll go, all right so let's go through the whole chapter but i don't really have time for that i only want to deal with the verse all right let's go to the verse but you're not reading the verse in context you can't win you know we'll go through whole chapters explain every single point beyond what a so-called christian scholar plantation christian scholar could do and we're we're incorrect you know we're the devil now but you can't you can't tell us i can tell you what it doesn't mean but i can't tell you what it means you know, too many people are like that First Timothy 4, verse 5. For it is sanctified by the word of Yahweh, Baha'sham Yahweh Shai, and prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. Right, a good minister. Apostle Paul's not going to call someone a good minister if they're ministering, they're teaching, serving someone to, be, to, to teach them to sin. You know, and of course, eating swine, even touching swine is a sin. Yeah, so that again proves a contextual mark that it's talking about them clean meats. You know, Leviticus 11, Deuteronomy 14. We'll tell you about that. The brother's got a lesson on it. You know, the clean meats you can't eat. Verse 7. But refuse profane and old wives, fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. So, oh, I heard this thing at once, like this anti of this. Man, that's, that's, that's everyone. Everyone's all about, they're very, especially our people. Benjamites especially believe in mermaids and shit. You know, it's very superstitious people. You know, but the scripts are very plain. Go back to the article. Animal rebellion protest protesters have poured milk on the floor in shops across the country. The group coordinated the action in stores, including Waitrose, Whole Foods, Marks and Spencer in London, Norwich and Edinburgh, just before 12pm on Saturday. 
Footage online shows several protesters pouring milk from the shelves in the Norwich Marks dispensary in front of horrified shoppers. And really, do they believe, all right, if we do this, they're probably, we're going to bankrupt the dairy industry. You know, it's again, it's like the Pan-African walks, man. The feel-good fact that I've done something. You know, I've, right. I've fought my cause. I've protested for this. You know, I marched for that. And then you go about your, you know, back to your, your regular daily routine. With a more haughty ego. Exactly. Uh, Norwich police confirmed four people have been arrested following the incident for offences of assault and criminal damage. Elsewhere, one group poured milk out in Harrods food hall in Knightsbridge. Another was filmed emptying milk bottles onto the floor and across a table laden with cheeses in Fortnum and Mason in Piccadilly. <laughs> Animal Rebellion said it's calling for a plant-based future and highlighting the need to support farmers in transitioning to a sustainable plant-based food Bro, system. How the fuck are you supporting a farmer by pouring out his produce? Hi, I've come to support your business by burning down half your stock. I hope you I hope you will aid me in in this trans transfer or you say transferring of you know whatever it is. That that doesn't help. That's right. You can tell these people really have nothing of value to fight for. You know, this is the cause they choose. Lou Hayden, a charity worker from Herefordshire who joined the action at Fort and Mason said, This is not how I imagine spending my weekend. Unfortunately, this disruption is necessary to get those in power to listen to the academics at Oxford, Harvard and the IPCC, which is the Intergovernmental Pen uh, Panel on Climate Change. The world's best climate and land scientists are calling for the transition to a plant-based food system. We need bold and decisive politics at this time, not the horror show we currently see. There's someone in an office, oh, I wasn't listening to the academics, but as soon as you started pouring milk on the floor, I was in. Uh, we need bold and decisive politics at this time, not the horror show we currently see. Uh, meanwhile, Skylar Sharple, an international development graduate from Bristol and one of the protesters at Harris said supporters of Animal Rebellion are back acting because Prime Minister Liz Truss and Ranil Jayawardena, I said that right, <laughs> Uh, I again decided to ignore calls to start building a better future. A plant based future would see a beautiful world for us all, thriving with nature and life. One person reacted to the Animal Rebellion tweet saying it was a protest which was impossible to defend. Yeah, that's it on and that. What is the aim? You know, beyond that, what is the aim? That's a, a self righteous protest, that. That's right. Yeah, but this, it goes to demonstrate the, how bugged out people are, man. You know, some people say, all right, I'm not a vegan, but I understand where they're coming from. You know, they're self-righteous. Like the Buddha said, they've made their own doctrine as the truth, and now they're trying to forward it. And when the Heavenly Father clearly said that these people would come, you know, commanding to abstain from meats that were meant to be received with thanksgiving. You know, milk is a, an extension of that because it's, you know, these people don't eat meat either. But they're saying even milk, you know, you can't have. When although it's, you know, uh, an analogy, you know, it talks about how the um, land is flowing with milk and honey. You know, so clearly that is something... That the animal products are not unlawful, man. You know, now there's also an argument for health's sake. You know, the whole food has been defiled. So they pump, you know, they pump it with antibiotics. You know, so you should probably not eat too much meat. That's right. But again, it doesn't, sorry, no, it doesn't mean it's unlawful. Yeah. I think there's a person that excessive meat in it as well. Mm. Uh, the eyes set up, and I think it's in the rock of them. Uh, I feel like it says eyes. You know. All right, it could be mistaken. It's right, because you have uh, you know, certain people who might make a doctrine. You know, uh, saying that you know, you know, I'm vegan now, so you know, it means I, I'm not allowed to, you know, have uh, <laughs> have meat. That means, uh, yeah, like when it comes to certain, you know, high holidays that year, the Pesach. You know, if a brother does want to eat a plant-based, and then for the Pesach, 
he, 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 you know, that's not unlawful. It's not, it's not a law that you have to eat meat, you know, apart from the Pesach. So, you know, if a brother wants to do that for a brother, shouldn't be fucking spilling milk all over the floor, you know, dashing steaks around Tesco. Yeah, that's insanity. I say, but to make a whole teaching out of it and then to teach others that that's how it is, you know, it's going on. The yeah, which I said that he's over so great that one of the leaders of the commandments to teach men so. So you could you could be, you know, on point and then you just say, Well, I'm a vegan, yeah, da 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 but I don't keep the pasa. Well that's one that's one bit of leaven. What does that do? It leavens the whole lump. You know, it means that it makes the whole the whole teaching unsound, unhygienic spiritually. Might not be eyes, might not be eyes. Just cook meat for now, innit? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, Jake, whenever you have a family gathering, you know, the, the food ten that tends to be there is, you know, pork, shrimp, lobster, or if it, even if it's not one of them unclean meats, it's something high in fat, high in salt, high in sugar, you know, mac and cheese. I was thinking <laughs> of that too. <laughs> you know? I might just leave it back again. There was even even one we were talking just earlier as well. Uh, fresh and fit, you know, sometimes it's it's there's certain biblical gems you can get out of it. But even just on a just a how bugged out people are, there was one woman on there that said they're going, What's a red flag in a man? She said a man that doesn't eat vegetables. You know, that's which <laughs> in this time that is a very sound answer as well. But um my man Fresh the Benjamite said, Eh, what? That that you that's weird, bro, that's weird. Which really, it's not weird, you know. You want to, you would want to see that in um, the ancient world, it was nothing to give. If you received a, a fruit or a vegetable, you know, as a as a gift, you'd be grateful. But in now, if it's not, again, mac and cheese, you know, some big high fat, <laughs> three course meal, you know, people are ungrateful for that. Look at Sarah, chapter thirty seven. And verse 28, for all things are not profitable for all men, neither hath every soul pleasure in everything. Mm. Be not unsatiable in any dainty thing, nor too greedy upon meat, for excess of meat bringeth sickness, and surfeiting, surfeiting will turn into cola. By Am I looking at words, Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's, that shows you how we've been in Babylon too long, man, as a people. The, the uh, man can say, that's weird, man. You want your man to be healthy? You're concerned about the offset? Because, you know, that, that has an impact on your whole body. You know, your sperm count. You know, if you're, if you're eating pork, no, you're not even pork, but, uh, you know, excess fat lamb with a lot of fat, you're eating that all the time, eating that all the time, it's going to have an effect on your health and therefore your progeny, your offspring. So that was actually a very intelligent answer, you know, shockingly enough. The word chola, cola. or cola, means one of the four bodily humors identified with bile and believed to be associated with a peevish or irritable temperament. Mm. Okay. Well, is there any uh, word? Ah, oh. oh. I was wondering how you got the, the question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't get that on the ends. I look it on the ends after that too. Well, Origin, origin, Greek, cholera. Oh, cholera. cholera, cholera. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Late Middle English, remote French. Cholera, yeah. Bile, anger. The Latin cholera, diarrhea. No, no, and all illnesses can really be traced back to your diet. If you want to be spiritual, you know, about it, of course, it comes from the Heavenly Father. But again, the Heavenly Father set up laws on the clean and unclean meats, and He also set balance for us, us to have the discipline for example the scripture talking about not having too much of it you know gluttony that's right you know just balance all right so it's all about a false weight sorry a just way a false balance is abomination you know but a false weight a false balance is exactly what our people have now caller from etims late 14th century bio 
as one of the humours in excess of which was supposed in old medicine to cause irascibility or temper I might look that word up too from old French cholera bile anger from late Latin cholera bile where we go on that so Sarah 37 and verse 28 again I start 27 if my son prove thy soul in thy life and see what is evil for it and give not that unto it you know, so, so something a brother may be able to handle, you know, drinking strong drink, for example. Not all the time, not every day, you know, but every now and then. Or a brother might not even be able to ha handle a beer, you know, but both those things are lawful. You know, like it says, all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient for me. All things are lawful, but I'll not be brought under the power of any. You know, drinking is lawful. You don't want to be brought under the power of any. Oh man, I can't get out of bed until I've had, you know, Hennessy. You know, that's an issue, of course. So Sarah, 27... And 28 for all things are not profitable for all men neither have every soul pleasure in everything be not insatiable in any dirty thing nor too greedy upon meats for excess of meats bringeth sickness and surfeiting will turn into cola by surfeiting have many perished but he that taketh heed prolongeth his life you know and the best thing to take heed to is this word it's got all, all of the above mentioned things you know the dietary law how to spiritually manage all things your household you know how to deal with brothers so on and so forth it's all in the scripture have we read all the articles uh, i think there might be one more God. and you know they're pushing we were looking at articles they're pushing the MOTB every single day it seems man you know those and these are not just uh, end times or biblical christian networks you know, of, of publications that are pushing this out. This is mainstream stuff. That's right. You know, saying again, it's inevitable. You know, this is the natural turn. Many, 20 years ago, it looked insane, but now it's a natural progression. You know, so really they're, they're persuading people with that. If you ever studied, well, I assume people did in literature, you know, at least to some degree, or language, but you study the uh, intention of how words are used. You know, we're saying it is inevitable and pushing it out and pushing it out and pushing it out. There's predictive programming. You know, it's not inevitable. You know, if, if you take the, the, the carnal plane, as it were, you know, to most people, this isn't inevitable. You know, so it's, it shows it's a guided uh, attempt. You know, but guess what? The Heavenly Father's guiding it all. And it's his charagma, it's his chip. Uh, this is from The Guardian. Uh, and the headline reads, Iran breaching nuclear deal by providing Russia with armed drones, says UK. From Monday the 17th of October, the UK joins France in saying apparent drone supply for use in Ukraine leaves Iran in breach of 2015 JCPOA. Britain has joined France in viewing the Iranian supply of armed drones to Russia for devastating use in Ukraine as a breach of Iran's obligations under the 2015 nuclear deal. The joint view comes as EU foreign affairs ministers slapped human rights sanctions on the Iranian morality police over their handling of street protests and treatment of women. The drone strikes continued in Ukraine on Monday, killing three more people. Despite the French British belief that Iran is breaching the, U the UN Security Council resolution that endorsed the nuclear deal by supplying the drones, there is no immediate plan to refer the issue to the UN, but diplomatic sources said the issue were live. Right, and that goes back to what Mr. Biden said again. You know, do you remember a couple of months back they said, well, are you, you going to do what about it? He said, well, no. Why? Because that'll be World War Three. You know, you can have all these things in place, but it don't mean shit unless someone does anything. If I say, yo, if you step across this line, I'm going to, you know, do whatever. And you step across the line, I don't do it. Well, you know, what was the point? You know, these, these, there's wars and rumours of wars, of course, and it is going to spiral, you know, but people are tested. And then they say, well, I've supplied them, you didn't do shit, so now I'm going to, you know, increase it. Again, gradualism. Like, they were testing. They're testing the waters, man. They're dipping their toe in. See, well, no, sh no shark bit me, you know, so I'll put my whole foot in. See what happens then. Nothing happens. I'll, you know, I'll put my leg in. Next thing, I'm, I'm deep diving. You know, so you're going to see this, this ramp up.
A spokesperson for the UK Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office said Iran's supply of drones to Russia constituted a breach of UN Security Council Resolution 2231, which was unanimously adopted six days after the nuclear deal was signed in Vienna and called on UN member states to refrain from actions that undermine implementation of commitments. The UK has condemned Iran's decision to supply drones and training to Russia. Iran supplying drones is inconsistent with UN Security Council Resolution 2231 and is further evidence of the role Iran plays in undermining global security, the spokesperson said. The UK will continue to work with our partners to hold Iran to account for its destabilizing behavior around the world. French Foreign Ministry spokesperson last week revealed Paris had noted a great deal of information that reports the use of Iranian drones by the Russian armed forces in Ukraine in bombardments that were aimed at civilian targets. Yeah, and one, yeah. In a time of war, you know, there's, there's no such thing as a civilian. You know, one nation goes to war against another nation, they're, they're, in, they're in war. There's no such thing. You know, the idea of a civilian is really is a new concept. Yeah, there's no such thing. Oh, the Midianites. Well, are you a Midianite soldier? Or are you a Midianite civilian? I can't really work it out. You know, it's straight, straight to it. You know, kill the men, the women, the women that have had men, kill them, and then the rest, you know, get taken up. The servants, slaves, wives. You know, that was war in the ancient world. You know, and, and people are going back. You see, even with you know, so-called red pill movements and everything, there's a there's a masculine spirit being pushed out. You know, on the men, a warlike spirit. Because you know, things are going to return back to a time of <laughs> trouble and then a time of hardship. I can't remember the phrase how it goes exactly, but you know, weak men create hard times, hard times create strong men, strong men create easy times or good times, easy times or good times create weak men. You know, we've had some, we've not been perturbed, you know, we've not had a great major world war, you know, as a couple of generations back. You know, so everyone's got soft and cooked. You know, everyone's just sat there, beer in hand, you know, on the sofa, just not moving. Comfortable. <laughs> Watching what the TV, okay, Ru uh, Russia bad, Ukraine good, you know, but they don't understand the history behind it. And we're not taking any side, we're taking the Heavenly Father's side. You know, but if it came to it, yeah, man, blast Babylon. That's right. Yeah, you know, but Russia's going to do that and the EU's going to do that. You know, so bring it on, man. Exactly, you know, when you're in a state of, like, comfortability for so long, some point you you'll be led to believe that whatever come to you to your doors when they shall say peace and safety there's sudden destruction there is as a woman in travail and you know the waters break oh man oh, if you ever seen them you know docu not even documentaries but dramas you know they all portray it that, that comes suddenly obviously you know it's there you know it's there but bang you don't know the time you know like us we know the season but we don't know that day or hour not even Yahweh Shai knows that only the heavenly father but we know we're in that time so we're measuring the tokens you know, we, we, we're waiting for it, man. You know, watch as well as pray. That's right, as it says in second, I just man in one measure at a time diligently. We go back to the article, it says, although a ban on Iranian arms exports expired in 2020, the nuclear deal signed in 2015, known as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, that's what it stands for, retains the ban on any activity related to ballistic missiles until 2023. <laughs> France and let's read that bit again. Let's, yes. let's, let's zoom in on that there. Although a ban on Iranian arms exports expired in 2020, the nuclear deal signed in 2015, known as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action (JCPOA), retains a ban on any activity related to ballistic missiles until 2023 see if you if you're really planning it you'd say man never you know oh we'll review if we'll blow each other to smithereens mutually assured destruction we'll review that in a few years you know that's the thing the cast the cause their own tongue to fall upon them so there it is let the heathen fall up in their own in their own net man and let them be taken in their own snare i'm on <laughs> i'm on truth France and the UK say Iran in supplying drones is in breach of obligations on the part of the JCPOA. 
and the missile technology control regime that limits the proliferation of missiles. The West has had the ability to, quote, snap back, end quote, on some sanctions if it asserts Iran is breaching the JCPOA. More practically, it is inconceivable that the West will resume negotiations about renewing the nuclear deal so long as there is clear evidence that Iran is supplying arms to help Russia defeat Ukraine. But again, unless you're throwing hands on them, you know, laying hands on them, it don't mean shit. It's, oh, don't do that, please. You know, you see that? You see that in E, how he raises it. Please, do, please, don't hit your mum. You know, just come on, think about it, lad. Okay. What the blood clot you are dealing with, boy? You know, after he's already licked him five times, and look, you know, Jake runs mad, but there's, there's a certain level of, um, you know, Jake knows when to, when to be respectful. You know, when he's in a scenario around E, then it's, oh, the discipline comes in. But when he's around his own people, he forgets that shit. You know, but the scriptures are very clear about disciplining. You know, so if, if you're trying to take on a, a so-called parental role, you're, you're the um, guardian of the earth as you position yourself, do some shit about it, man. You know, if you don't want them to give, give arms, lay hands. Right? This is Matthew 24 and 7. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. back to the article it says the talks are effectively on hold after the US midterm elections even though Iran is continuing to expand its use of more sophisticated centrifuges what's a centrifuge <laughs> I'm not sure about this yeah I'll look that up too alright so a centrifuge is a device that uses Centrifugal force to no. separate <laughs> okay. various components of a fluid. A centrifugal force is like a roundabout in it. If you're on a roundabout, you put something in the middle, you spin it around, it's going to fly out to the side. Alright. That's like if you ever get a, um, so you get a, a Tesco bag or whatever, and it's got stuff in it, you swing it round, you know, that's why it's, it's all, it gets pushed out to the outside, and that's why it wouldn't fall out. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, this is achieved by spinning the fluid at high speed within a container, thereby separating fluids of different densities, all liquids from solids. So what was it in context of the article then? So uh, the talks are effectively on hold after the US midterm elections, even though Iran is continuing to expand its use of more... Maybe if I read up. More practically, it is inconceivable that the West will resume negotiations about renewing a nuclear deal so long as there is clear evidence that Iran is supplying arms to help Russia defeat Ukraine. The talks are effectively on hold until after the US midterm elections, even though Iran is continuing to expand its use of more sophisticated centrifuges. No, I'm still none the wiser. Yeah. Basically, as long as Iran is back in Russia, they're gonna look to do that, you know, in plain English. Niggas of a boss as fuck. Like right, the Russians are guarding it, back in these, you know, these other nations. And keep your eyes on Libya, Ethiopia, and well, Iran's there, Persia's there, you know, because Iran used to be called Persia. You're not gonna find in the scripture, oh, Iran is gonna do this, you know, but you will find Persia. And that's one of the rare you know, instances of a biblical nation being referred back. And I believe it means to, um, I can't remember actually. I thought it meant Parash to, to uh, cut. Parash to Persia, but it goes back to a Hebrew word. I believe it's uh, Parash, yeah. Um, the, uh, the article reads, the Iranian foreign ministry spokesperson Nasir Kanani in his weekly press conference again denied Iran was supplying drones to Russia. Challenging claims by the US, Ukraine and many armed specialists that Iranian manufactured Shahid 136 drones were in clear use. He said Iran has repeatedly declared that it's not a party to the war between Russia and Ukraine. Iran has not exported any weapons to any of the warring parties. As we have said many times, 
Iran's foreign policy is based on opposing war. And regarding the war in Ukraine, we also are also against war, and we are trying to end the military approach in this field. We're against war, so we're trying to give them drones so the war ends quicker, so there's no more war. Come on, guys. You know, you, there's always going to be the, um, the political or the uh, diplomatic you know, thing that they put forward because every, all nations have to take after E in this regard. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, they, like uh, Kim Jong un and Donald Trump, they'll shake hands. Or who was it now? Uh, Biden. They'll shake hands. You know, but they, they want to kill each other, man. They have hatred for each other. Or at least Kim Jong un hates Babylon. You know, he wants to blow that shit up. But them lot, they'll smile in each other's face. You know, because that's how he has set the precedent. You know, all nations follow after him in that manner. The Iranian president, Ibrahim Raisi, has in the recent past spoken of a new military pact with Russia, but not referred to a specific deal on drone exports. Iranian journalists have repeatedly challenged the foreign ministry about its denials. The US warned on Monday that it would take action against companies and nations working with Iran's drones program, describing the deepening alliance between Moscow and Tehran as a profound threat. Anyone doing business with Iran that could have any link to UAVs or ballistic missile developments or the flow of arms from Iran to Russia should be very careful and do their due diligence. The US will not hesitate to use sanctions or take action against perpetrators, said a State Department spokesperson. I believe it when I see it. You know, when Trump was in control, you know, people, they, they did, these are the nations, they didn't really, you know, try pushing too much. You know, he had the Taliban on lock. You know, he said, if you, well, I can't remember, the, but there's a video, he said, if you ever, you know, touch America, I will hit you harder than you've ever been hit. You know, and you won't be coming back. He, he spoke with great boldness. Yeah, I remember him saying something like that. Biden, he can't even finish a fucking sentence, man. You know, no one's going to be scared of that. And you've got Eve by his side. <laughs> you know, the perfect power couple, man. Alexei Kuleba, the head of the Kiev military administration, said last week that explosions at military base 75 kilometers south of the city, wounding one, has been carried out by these drones. The highly effective kamikaze drones have been used with great effect and are seen as a cheap alternative to missiles. EU foreign ministers imposed sanctions on 11 Iranian security officers and four entities, including the Morality Police, on Monday in response to the crackdown on protests triggered by the death in police custody of Masa Amine, a 22-year-old Kurd. The EU list goes further than the recently announced British and US sanctions, but still stops short of the systematic attack on Iranian regime supporters and family members in Europe that is being sought by some Iranians. In common with Washington, the EU sanctioned Iran's morality police and two of its key figures Mohammad Rastami and Haj Ahmad Nizay. In addition, the EU designates the Iranian law enforcement, enforcement forces as well as the number of its local chiefs. Enforcement forces. <laughs> LES, yep. For their role in the, re the repression of the protests. The EU also listed Issa Zarapov, the Iranian Minister of Information and Communication Technology, for his responsibility over the internet shutdown, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps Cyber Defense Command was also the subject of sanctions. Anusha Shari, one of the former British in, uh, Iranian dual nationals released from Evin prison after nearly five years of detention, said the West needed to go much further in enforcing sanctions. There is no point imposing sanctions only on the morality police but that are not going to come to Europe, but there are a large number of children and relatives of the regime that, like the Russian oligarchs, like having the high life here and have assets here. Open quote said, Britain cannot have dealings with a regime that kills children and detains people for the amount of hair they show. This regime is brutal and has no red lines. Britain will be asked when this regime falls whether it was on the right side of history, end quote. <laughs> That's rich, you know. That's Ross Clark rich. A man that had no, as it say, no, showed, new fa showed no favour to the young or to the old, you know, was, was ripping out. And we're not talking too long ago, man. We're really not. You know, I saw a, a sort, not a meme, but a sort of 
you know, a picture graphic when somebody had posted on YouTube recently. Emmett Till was 81, you know, recently, I believe. Obviously, he's passed away, but yeah. if he was still alive, he'd be 81. You know, so that's like parent or grandparent age, man. That's really not long ago. And that's the atrocity. Oh, and we'll never hurt children. You fucking devils, man. You've hurt enough. You've hurt enough children to the point that you don't have to do it anymore. You know, you've made your wealth. You've built your empire to the point where you can sanitize history. You know, wash it all up to the point where now you can enforce. You can use your violence to pretend you're protecting people. But they've always got other interests. They think, you think they're really worried about, you know, Elamite women. The suppression of Elamite women. You know, the devil is now concerned about people's rights. But that, that's again, that's his wickedness, man. You know, it's Psalm, if I can pull that. Psalm 55. Psalm 55, verse 20. It says, He hath put forth his hand against such as be at peace with him. He hath broken his covenant. You know, and this devil's gone to war with every nation. But now he's on the moral high ground. Oh, no. Nah. You know, we can't go against people based on, we can't have dealings with them. Yeah, but aren't you in bed with Saudi Arabia? Don't they be doing some similar shit? Oh, no, nah, but they're on your side. You know, my bad. Verse 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. You know, so they're talking about protecting people, but they're just here for war. They're just here for money, resources, power, and control. So I have Sirach chapter 12, verse 10. Never trust thine enemy, for like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. And you can clean the rust off iron, you know, but if you leave it in the same oxidizing conditions, guess what? The rust comes back. So you can try polish up your devilishness, but it's, it's going to seep out your pores, man. You know? That's right. Verse 11. So he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him. And thou shalt be unto him as if thou hadst wiped a looking glass, and thou shalt know that his rust hath not been altogether wiped away. You know, you zoom in and then, oh shit, I can still see some rust, you know. It's not perfect. To the naked eye it might seem so, but when you really look at him, you know, then that man of sin's been revealed, man. That's right. You know, no matter how nice and cool this devil is with you, whether he opens the door for you or whatever, He'll still turn around and, you know, and kill you if he has the opportunity. Absolutely. That's right. That all the article is. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Emmett Till, actually. Uh, don't know if you came mm. across. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, so this was from the 29th of June this year. All right, from the Daily Mail. And the headline reads, Family of Emmett Till demand arrest of Edomite woman, 88, after discovering unserved 1955 warrant accused her of kidnapping the Jake teen before he was lynched by pair of men in Mississippi. All right. And look, if you think that's an issue, oh, poor little white lady, you know, in the, with a Zimmer frame and all of this. Look how many, you know, Nazis. They, they grabbed up after the war was done. You know, them men were in the 90s, the 100s. You know, they still locked them up. I had no mercy on, upon them. And if that's, you know, if someone did that to you people, of course not. Of course, you know, oh, yeah, let it slide. Fuck that shit, man. You know, but when Jake, oh, no, nah, leave. And it's, it's, not, it's not these other nations say It's not Elamites coming. Yeah, I don't think you should do it. No one's saying that shit. It's Jake. It's not even E. It's Jake. You know, that shit should infuriate you. I see where the Lord has to put at least two-thirds of our people to death in Babylon. Because you'll let your own brother die and you'll let the perpetrator walk free. You'll give them a hug. You'll forgive them. You'll give them arms. A-L-M-S and probably A-R-M-S. Romans chapter 2 verse 11. For there is no respect of persons with the Most High. There is. You're a baby. You're an old woman. That's right. You know, you're a whatever. You're getting it. If you've done wrong, you'll get it. You know, only them that have the covering of Yahweh Shai will be exempt. You know, the, um, is it the word Thawa in the Ezekiel 9 and 4? Yeah, Thawa. Yeah. The Marketing, exemption, Marketing. exemption from judgment, man. That's it. You know, if you've not got that, you're through, man. All right. So, uh, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Sorry. The article reads, a team search in a Mississippi courthouse basement for evidence about the lynching of Black teenager Emmett Till has found the unserved warrant charging a white woman 
1965 kidnapping and now relatives of the victim want authorities to finally arrest her nearly 70 years later. A warrant for the arrest of Carolyn Bryant Donham, 88, was discovered last week by searches inside a file folder that had been placed in a box. And what, what happened at the time? Why, why couldn't that have been taken out? And that, it, I, that actually cheers me up, the fact that his family, you know, are, 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 so, are still standing for it. You know, they're not, they're not cowering down. You know, which a lot of Jake, you know, they, they'd fall. Relatives want authorities to use the warrant to arrest Donham, who at the time of the slaying was married to one of two white men tried and acquitted just weeks after Till was abducted from her relative's home, killed and dumped into a river. Servant in charge of Terry Watts, the daughter of Till's cousin, told the AP in an interview. And they, they, they beat him differently, man. You know, I think everyone's seen that picture. Yeah. And that was an open open coffin funeral you know, everyone was able to see that and you yeah you fucking plantation christians we're all one you know as long as they say jesus they're all, they're all good you, know, you have no integrity man donham set off the case in august 1955 by accusing the 14 year old till of making improper advances at a family store in money mississippi the cousin of till who was there I said Till whistled at the woman, an act that flew in the face of Mississippi's racist social codes of the era. Evidence indicates a woman, possibly Donham, identified Till to the men who later killed him. The arrest warrant against Donham was publicised at the time, but the Lafleur County Sheriff told reporters he did not want to bother the woman since she had two young children to care for. Donham, who most recently lived in North Carolina, has not commented, has not commented publicly on calls for her prosecution. But Terry Watts said the Till family believes the warrant accused Donham of kidnapping amounts to new evidence. And I'm sure she said that he you know, molested her or whatever. And then come out later after he was brutally murdered and said, oh, no, he didn't. This like, is, yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. It's like with Black Wall Street, you know how that, uh, you know, the events transpired to the destruction of Black Wall Street. Uh, I forgot how it was it. I think it might have been an either white woman that accused, you know, Jake brother of either touching or. I'm not familiar with that specific case, but that's if it, that's a repeating, you know, occurrence in history. You know, you don't know how many Jake men have been put to death based on false accusations. That's right. And this is this is the legacy of Babylon the Great. You know, that's why it says. This is Revelation. 18, which is the closing credit to this wicked society. This is Revelation 18 and verse 20. It says, Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for the Most High hath avenged you on her. Right, and that's talking about when Babylon goes out, when there's great nuclear fallout, you know, the chariot shooting fire, you know, with the great brightness, like it talks about in Isaiah 62. You know, Lord, when we'll touch on that. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's the revenge, that's the vengeance. So I read that one more time. Revelation 18 and 20. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for the Most High hath avenged you on her. Which, you know, that proves that there's going to be apostles, prophets in Babylon the Great. You know, what does Babylon the Great, what blood does that have of the prophets of, you know, first century AD if reincarnation doesn't exist? You know, explain that one. Yeah, if that's all the articles we'll get into Isaiah 61 now. Oh, that was, yeah, right, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, this is from Wikipedia, if I just go straight down to how uh, it started. The massacre began during Memorial Day weekend after 19-year-old Dick Rowland, a black shoe shiner, was accused of assaulting Sarah Page, a white 17-year-old elevator operator, in the nearby Drexel building. He was arrested and rumours that he was to be lynched were spread throughout the city where a white man named Roy Belton had been lynched the previous year. Upon hearing reports that a mob of hundreds of white men had gathered around the jail where Rowland was being held, a group of 75 black men, some armed, arrived at the jail to protect Rowland. The sheriff persuaded the group to leave the jail, assuring them that he had the situation under control. You know, so it's that, you know, false accusation. All right. 
that's called a false witness man that's sin you know the this will show you this man is the man of sin the epitome of wickedness i don't know what will yeah that's that's it on that cool cool all right so we'll hit isaiah 61 the whole chapter lord you know isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 the spirit of the lord yahweh is upon me because the lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek he has sent me to bind up the broken hearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prisons to them that are bound Done. you know who are the um who are captives all right you know who um who are the ones suffering all right who's getting you know um so, uh, constantly uh, you know we're constantly you know watched monitored all right hurry up and buy <laughs> even down to a small thing like that you obviously we laugh about it but you know it's them them look them shit man you know constantly on edge as the brother said you know the workplace you know you're always being over monitored That's compared it. to all your heathen counterparts you know broken hearted and meek you're meek we've got no power uh, people say, oh man, you know, how, how, how are the uh, Mexican Israelites? They have an army. You know, so do Jamaicans, so do so on and so forth. But that doesn't have any strength. You know, Jamaica can't go, right, fuck this shit. I'm taking over, you know, China. I'm taking over, and I'm taking over Copenhagen. Fuck that shit. You know, there's no power. There's no power like that. You know, and the ultimate captivity we're in is to this flesh. You know, when we get changed out of these bodies, we can't, we can't go back down. And you know, like it says in uh, Judith, I think it's the fifth chapter, you know, let us let us um basically let us cause these people to sin, because when they sin, you know, the power, their power, their God, sends us against them, or, you know, lets us control them. So when we're, when we're no longer captive to this flesh, these chains of darkness, body of death, you know, we can't we can't get ruled over, we can't get conquered. So verse two says to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, and the day of vengeance of our power to comfort all that mourn. And again, while people are mourning, you know, constantly, you know, oh man, I've got to pay this bill. I was just on the phone to one of my colleagues at work, you know, I was covering his shift, he was just calling, oh, thanks for that. We were just talking, you know, oh man, they've got me on so many hours. If I don't get these hours, I can't pay my bills. You know, but if I do get these hours, my knees are gone, you know, my back's gone. My daughter wants, wants um, to spend time with me. You know, this happening, that happening. It's just a fucking, it's a whole fuckery, man. It's just an, a, a cyclical loop. You know, until the Heavenly Father comes back to, and redeems his people, man. Our only way out is, <laughs> is in him. And I laugh because our people are so so far removed from that. I mean, it's not funny, but it's, you know, it's funny. This is verse 3 of Isaiah 61. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of Yahweh, that he might be glorified. So firstly, you know, Zion is a people. Zion is a people before a place. Zion means monument to Zion 1. You know, and the Lord first made his special people, his, his uh, chosen people, and then put them in a land. You know, so Zion represents the Israelites. I think it's Second Maccabees five nineteen. Exactly what I was going. Perfect. Book of Second Maccabees, chapter five, verse nineteen. Nevertheless, Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, did not choose the people for the place's sake, for the place, for the people's sake. So he didn't make a land and think, man. You know, I need to make some Israelites to go in this. And he made he made the Israelites and then took them into the land by the hand by his own hand, you know, to conquer the inhabitants thereof. So it says verse three again, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And again that represents you know, the garment you can read uh, Revelation sixteen and fifteen, Revelation three and three, Baruch five, chapter five, yeah, yeah. That's right. Verse 4 And they shall build the old wastes, they shall raise up 
the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. You know, because in this whole, you know, the third world, certain things are going to happen. You know, certain places in Jerusalem are going to fall. You know, certain places around the earth are going to fall. So there's, there's going to have to be a great, you know, re rehabilitation. I don't mean it in terms of, you know, drug use, but rehabilitation of the land, of certain you know, buildings, structures, and everything's going to have to be renewed and rebuilt, man. Verse 4 And they shall build the old waste, and they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed the flocks, and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. Um, but I can get a precept on that actually. This is Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12 That at that time you were without Hamashiach Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel And strangers from the covenants of promise Having no hope and without Yahweh in the world But now in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai You who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Hamashiach Right that's perfect because we were made like unto these other nations We were made into aliens, what's alien mean is foreign doesn't mean you know a little green man because we, we all think alien you know that's how we've been programmed from growing up in you know the hollywood movies and so on that's right you know an alien just means a foreigner like even an israelite say if i live in you know if this brother lives in jerusalem in the holy land and i live just out say i live in turkey when i come to jerusalem for the you know the holy days i'm i'm now a stranger it even talks about that one law shall be unto you that's born in the land and one should be, sorry, stranger, and one should be unto them that's born in the land. You know, because they're both Israelites, but they're just from different places. You know, so there'd be a different level of, you know, hospitality. And like when you link up all your cousins, like, oh, you know, because we'd all, we'd all go up three times a year. The men, you know, so I think that's Deuteronomy 16, 16. All the men should appear before the Heavenly Father three times a year. So for you brothers that say the law, the law, the law, you know, why aren't you going to Jerusalem three times a year if we're going to be saved by the law? I'm not to lay a stumbling block, but really it's you brothers that are saying we're justified by the law. We're justified through our faith in the blood of Yahweh Shai to cover us where we fall short. Of course, we strive to do our best. There are certain things that we can't do in this captivity and in this flesh. <laughs> That's right. If you can break, you break one law, you break them all. There it is. There it is. There's no, there's no man apart from Yahweh Shai that can say, well, listen, man, I, I keep every law. You know, exactly. Not something that I have to you know, take issue with. Sakari over they'll talk about oh now do you sin? I don't sin. I don't sin. It's like hold on a minute. You know, I can think alright, so you went to Jerusalem three times a year, you did this, you did that. You know, you have a whole which you might, you know, you have a whole other house or another, you know, bed for your woman when she's on a menstrual, so on and so forth. There's so many oh so you're never you know, there's so many man. There's so many. And there's laws that we forget, laws that we don't know, you know. But that's why when we change we change out of this flesh that's corruptible and put into incorruption, immortal, which again they teach, you know, only for a thousand years. When you're immortal, incorruptible, and the laws are put within your heart, you can't forget it. And you right. damn sure can't transgress it. And another reason to prove why we can't be justified by the law is that our righteousness is as filthy rags. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you go into that, that word for filthy rags, it's actually a menstruous cloth. You know, like as Benjamin said, a blood clot. So our righteousnesses are like unto that. Yeah, you know, you're going to look, oh man, that's clean. You know, it's not clean. So we need Yahweh Shai. If we're justified by the law, why do we need Yahweh Shai? Exactly. Well, I've got Leviticus 25 and 39. It says, And if thy brother that dwelleth by thee be waxen poor and be sold unto thee, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bond servant. For as an hired servant and as a sojourner shall he be with thee and shall serve thee unto the year of Jubilee. And then shall he depart from thee both he and his children with him and shall return unto his own family and unto the possession of his fathers and shall give return i'm oh, sorry of his fathers shall he return you know for example you know if i run out of money and i, I said your brother can you help me I say yeah yeah i'll help you out but you're gonna have to work for this so i might work off you know build up a loan and i might work off right so you do this you look after this you sort the uh, cows out you sort the oxen out da -da 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 -da, and after this uh, amount of time you know it's um the debt is is paid back at that time 
So you can't, but you can't have, you couldn't have me in chattel slavery. You understand? But it's about to tell you here, verse 42 of Leviticus 25. For they are my servants, which I brought out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as bondmen. Thou shalt not rule over him with rigor, but thou shalt fear thy power. Both thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen that are round about you. Of them shall you buy bondmen and bondmaids, moreover of the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you. Of them shall you buy, and of their families that are with you, which they be begat in your land, and you shall be there, and they shall be your possession. You know, so this, if a heathen, if you have him as a, as a slave, as a bond servant, uh, any children he has, well, they're yours now as well. You know, it's like if a cat, <laughs> it's, like, it's literally like a cat. Yeah, a if kitten. a cat has a kitten, yeah. you, this kit, cat can't say, well, hold on, Bridget, this is my kitten. Firstly, because a cat can't speak. Now, nah, but on a, on a serious note, that's, that's the law. You know, you might get offended by that. Well, that's what, it's a, a possession? You know, that seems a bit, but you did it to us. And now, you know, years down the line, you build up your empire, you've become sustainable outside of, you know, over <laughs> hardcore oppression. You know, so now, you, now you're comfortable not to do that in, in open. And you'll, you'll roll around the earth telling people what they can and can't do. Isaiah 61 and verse 6 For you shall be named the priests of the Lord Men shall call you the ministers of our power You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles And in their glory shall you boast yourselves Right, so there's, there's strangers It's giving you the two, not two Because there's three classifications of men truly The sons of the wicked, sons of the most high And the sons of men you know, But the two classifications in here There's the servants, you know, the strangers, the aliens and there's the ministers. You know, so the strangers, the aliens, they'll feed your flocks, you know, be your vine dressers. But ye, you Israelites, will be named the priests of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. You know, and we're gonna minister unto the nations. And we're gonna use that tree of life to truly heal, you know, heal the earth and bring a righteous rulership. Yeah, the nations are gonna get the whoopings, and they're gonna get the judgment, hardcore ser hardcore slave slavery, servitude for a thousand years. Yeah, but there's gonna come a time where they recognize, hold on, this is a righteous rulership. You know, the trees are back, you know, the earth's bringing forth the nutrients as it should. And they'll appreciate that. It says um, the kings the kings lie in glory, you know, and basically they'll go back to their own land. But there'll still be a tax, you know, and they'll still accept the, um, the lordship of the Israelites. But they'll, they'll live in an undefiled planet. Exodus 19 and 6. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak to the children of Israel. So again, it, it doesn't say anything about a multi-ethnic church. You know, surely, even here in uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, which you'd expect is the so-called New Testament, you know, everything's back, the Gentiles are in, da -da -da, even though you know, Peter's known as the apostle unto the circumcision. But still, if you're going to reference that, but now it's a multi-ethnic church, you know, everyone's on, on the same level. But why is that not anywhere in the scripture? So it's 1 Peter chapter 2, verse, starting at verse 9. For you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvellous light, which in time past were not a people, but now are the people of the Most High, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. And again, going back to what the brother said, you know, about us being uh, aliens from the Commonwealth of Israel. You know, we're all going to be in, in the right frame of mind. There's not going to be a wicked Israelite among us. And I can't wait for that day. That's right, the Lord will be in our inward parts, you know, the new covenant. From, from birth, you know, obviously that certain men are going to be, you know, changed like that. Like it says we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. You know, then certain ones are going to have to come through them men. You know, and then they're going to be righteous from a baby. You understand? Isaiah 61 and verse 7, for your shame, you shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double, everlasting joy shall be unto them. And that's fair enough, you know, Israel gets double, you know, on the, on the, on the good side, and he gets double on the bad. You know, this is Revelation 18, and verse, starting at verse 4, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. 
for her sins have reached unto heaven, and the Most High hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her, even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double, according to her works. In the cup which she had filled, fill to her double. That's a double the amount of judgment is going to go up. And, and we got it heavy. And you know we got it heavy. It's only, that's why. So it's only fair and righteous that these other nations and these saw Eden, you know, drinks of that same cup. So it does like it says in the Jeremiah 49. That's right. You know, them who were not meant to drink of that cup, aka the Israelites, we were meant to be perfect, holy, righteous. Of course, you know, the Lord set up his decree. But from the beginning, you know, we were meant to be that, that rulership. But we got it. And then you think you as the devil are not going to get it. Now, that would be unrighteous. Even, you know, certain prophets were in captivity and slavery. Man, wasn't Yahweh Shai under the Romans? And Jeremiah under the Babylonians. There it is. You know, there's, yeah, we could go through not. <laughs> Isaiah 61 and verse 8. But I, the Lord Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, love judgment i hate robbery for burnt offering and i will direct their work in truth and i will make an everlasting covenant with them and their seed shall be known among the gentiles and their offspring among the people all that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the lord hath blessed and it's like unto if you see the spitting image of you know well 50 cent son you know, he's been in the news a lot, in the Jake news. Or, um, you know, Michael Jackson's children, because they were such esteemed men. You know, Michael Jordan. You know, there's a lot of Michaels, Mike Tyson. You know, all them children, if people recognize, man, look, yo, there goes a uh, man. You know, it's going to be like that. But that's for every single Israel. There goes an Israel, an Israel like Oh, my God. You know, they're going to start, it's likened to a celebrity. The same sort of infatuation the other nation's going to have. But it's going to be a, a, a righteous one, you know, because there's a natural reason. You know, people are infatuated by 50 cent what for rapping about, you know, killing people, and <laughs> getting rich or dying trying, you know, being shot, shooting, you know, all of that. People, oh, look, there goes, you know, that's, that's vain. You know, but, we're, oh, man, these are the people that govern the earth in righteousness, you know, that put down wickedness, put down sin, stop adultery. You now, all through the spirit, of course, of Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, but it's going to be attributed unto a, a nation, of course, because Yahweh Shai is of that nation. Isaiah 61 verse 10 I will greatly rejoice in the Lord my soul shall be joyful in my power for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation he hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels I didn't even think about that in the, in the garments and that's another one there right? yeah and that's yeah, again metaphor for you know, you know righteousness okay Verse 11, but as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causeth the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord power will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the creation, all the nations. And he's, he's known as the fountain of living waters. Because out of him came the living waters. Yahweh Shai is that living water, is that bread of life. No, and out of the heavenly Father came he. That's it on Isaiah 61, we can get into Isaiah 62 now. Can. Isaiah 62 verse 1. For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and that salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. No, not again saying Zion and Jerusalem. No, it's saying the same thing, proving that they're synonymous. And so it made people first, bearing that in mind. It says, until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof is a lamp that burneth. You know, and Yahweh Shai said himself, he, he's come to bring fire on earth, what will I if it be already kindled? So you're going to have, you know, nukes, and, but specifically this is talking about the chariots that are going to bring the fire. And there's going to be fire. The whole of Babylon is going to be turned into, you know, it's going to be, look, if you were to look, you know, from the heavens, it's going to be like a lake. That's right. A lake of fire. That's Babylon the Great. You know, Reduced into ashes. That's right. Okay. Yeah, and also, you know, other parts of the earth will be will get hit as well, but not the whole earth, because, you know, Scripture says that the earth abideth forever. All right, the land of Israel will be, you know, destroyed too. And that's why it's so integral, it's a part of prophecy that we just read there in Isaiah 61, that these other nations are going to have a, a hand in building that back up. You know, you destroyed us, you put us in slavery, you destroyed our land, you destroyed us, Zion, Jerusalem, the people, 
You know, so it's only right you have a hand in building it back. Verse 2. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Right, so we will finally be known as Yasharala. Oh, there goes Yasharala. Not there. Oh, there's a Jamaican, a Haitian, a Mexican. A Rican. <laughs> a there's a Brazilian. You know, it's going to be there's a, you know, an Israelite of the tribe of Fan. You know, they might even know the lineage, like it says their children should be known among the offspring. Oh man, look, you know, that's a Zambun son. Oh no, yeah, yeah, you know. So we're going to be the new celebrities in a righteous manner. Verse 3. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and the royal diadem in the hand of thy power. So we're going to be something of value. You know, finally, no longer will we be our righteousness is likened to filthy rags. You know, at that time, we will have been covered, you know, Lord willing, or we will be reborn, you know, and this time we're in a righteous vessel. You know, and we're not going to depart from those righteous ways. In Zechariah 9 and 16, And the Lord, their power shall save them in that day as the flock of his people, for they shall be as the stones of a crown, lifted up as an ensign upon his land. Very good. Very good, very good. I didn't think of it. Uh, verse, verse 4. Yeah, yeah. Isaiah 62, verse 4. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. You know, we, we firstly, we forsake. The Lord never forsook us. You know, we broke the covenant. The Lord didn't go against his word, he didn't go against his covenant. He just carried out. The part that he said, well, if you depart, this will happen. And he did it. You know? So we, it's like, it's like we've been unto, it's like unto us being forsaken, but really we chose that. You know, we went off. And our land, of course, is desolate, you know, trodden down by the Gentiles. And it's not bringing forth as it should. The whole earth, but especially our land. Right. A lot of it's in desert. You know, wherever we suffer, you know, the land of Israel suffers. We have a connection to that land. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. But thou shalt be called Hephzibah, and thy land Beulah, for the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. You mind looking up he, uh, Hephzibah and Beulah? I think Hephzibah means um, the delight, the delight that Yahweh has in us. And um, Beulah, I believe, is, goes into it. Ba'al, which is uh, like a husband. Well, it comes from the same root as Ba'al, which means like a lord. It doesn't mean the idol, Ba'al, you know, because all, that in itself is, is a Hebrew word. Ba'al, meaning a, a husband. Like it says, you should, no, you should no longer call him the Lord Ishi, but you should call him Ba'al. You'll no longer call him a man, you'll call him your husband. You know, you'll know him finally. Like I said, the Lord has surnamed thee, for thou hast not known me. Goes into my delight is in her. A name for Jerusalem, the Queen of King Hezekiah and mother of Manasseh. So it was a name of you know someone, but it's that's our um. It's it's a, an allegory basically. So the, the Lord won't go around calling us that we're still we're going to be called Yasharala, you know, but we're going to be delightful for the Lord for once. We're not going to be a thorn in the side. We're not going to be likened to an, an adulterous wife. No, we're finally going to be that virtuous woman that we were meant to be from the jump. So I am, if you went to the root word of it, it goes into delight, pleasure, longing, good pleasure. That in one which takes delight. Now like, like a son would rejoice, sorry, a, a father would rejoice in his son, you know, when he sees him doing something pleasant. Now like the Heavenly Father is known as the Heavenly Father for a reason. We're known as Yashar Allah, Yah, He, Shah, Prince, Allah, Power. He's a prince of the power. You know, the prince is the son of the king. And that's why we're known as the sons of the Messiah as well. The adoption is pertaining to the Israelites, who are, of course, Yashar Allah, the sons of the power. Uh, Isaiah 62, verse 5. For as the young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, 
so shall thy power rejoice over thee. Verse 6. I set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. You that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. Right, and that's going into, you know, videos going up day and night. That's now. You know, it talks about in Isaiah 19. You know, their line has gone out into all the earth. And the Israelites are like unto them stars in the heaven when you go to um, Joseph's dream. You know, all the sun and the moon and the 11 stars made obeisance unto him. You know, representing him being in that leadership position in the land of Egypt. You know, so our people again like unto them stars. So the, um, in them hath he declared the tabernacle for the sun. You know, that, that, those uh, stars there are going into the prophets. You know, it's teaching the word and the word going out. That's right. And videos going up, that's also you can also find that in Psalm 19. Yeah, like there's no uh, voice, no language, where the, as I said, there's no speech, no language where their voice is not heard. So it's constantly going off. You've got Buddhas going, got not going off, going up. You've got Buddhas speaking in all manner of tongues as well. You've got one brother, I believe, speaking in a, an Ethiopian dialect. You know? Even sign language too, I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Holland, Holland, the Holland, Holland, Holland Def Camp. That's it. Yeah, man, that, you know. Is, is everywhere and that, that's a, a a testament to the, the work of the lord man right yeah. psalm 19 and 2 day unto day utter a speech utter a speech and night unto night show his knowledge right so yeah it goes into you know videos constantly going up we've got brothers in all different time zones as well that's right you know it's inescapable this truth is inescapable a lot of a lot more jakes have heard this than, than they let on you know Isaiah 62 and 7 and give him no rest till he establish until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth you know Jerusalem means you know city of peace and we, we will be that city of peace right now we're a city of we're a city of being destroyed there's no peace among Israel in mourning the city of mourning that's where we're at now verse 8 the Lord Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai that sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength, surely I will no more give thy corn to be meat for thine enemies. And the sons of the strangers shall not drink thy wine, for the which thou hast laboured. Going to slack and that's going into the curses. You know, it talks about you will um, basically till the ground and another will reap. You know, so every, everything that we're doing, all of our labours, they're going to the devil, you know, or another heathen nation. And you, you know, you graft, you're doing your bus and your ass at work. And then you get home, you know, into your own neighborhood and you've got some, you know, expensive priced Moabite store, Ishmaelite store, or in England, tends to be Elamite stores. You know, we're at, it's, and it talks about that the stranger that is among you shall get, you know, above very high. So you've got people that will come, to go, to, go to Babylon, build up, you know, in a couple of generations, they'll be, they'll be millionaires. And then they'll look at you, oh, what the fuck are you doing, man? You know, what are you doing? Meanwhile, we're, you know, we're denied denied certain you know access to things and That's it's it, not just it. recent it's not just recent you know from um which amendment is it the in the slavery one 13th was it uh, maybe we uh, like say it, i might remember it being the 30th you know what i mean like uh you can it's basically this the slavery amendment it was i think 1865 and in that it said there's not going to be um, any slave labor apart from criminals. That's basically what they said. And then, you know, Jake was denied access to uh, jobs, denied access to housing. So when you can't, you can't, it talks in the Psalms about that, you know, about um, give me neither poverty, no, it's Proverbs 30, it? give me neither poverty nor riches. You know, that if, if you're broke, you are in dire poverty, you know, you may, may steal a loaf of bread and blaspheme the name of the heavenly father if you're too rich you'll deny him because you'll you'll feel plenty your belly's full proverbs 30 verse 8 remove far from me vanity and lies give me neither poverty nor riches feed me with food convenient for me lest i be full and deny thee and say who is the lord or lest i be poor and steal and take the name of my power in vain right but he specifically made us poor you know so we would still again so he could accuse us to the father you know but when you when you can't 
you that you're denied, you don't have a house, you don't have food, what are you going to do? How are you going to provide if you've got a family, what are you going to do? And then they'll lock you up, and they'll put you in the prison, industrial, private prison complex. You know, and that's, that's a very profitable business, right? It's all systematic, you know? And yeah, our people are wicked, but I, last time I looked it up, it was like, and you know, you can't trust the census as far as you can throw it, but just to give a rough idea, at one point we made up 13% of the populace in Babylon, and we made up something ridiculous like 60% of the prisons. You know, and uh, yeah, our people are in dire poverty and a lot of it, you know, will be down to that being in a, between a rock and a hard place. And some, you know, there is no excuse, you know, ultimately. But there's there's a context behind it. But you can't say, man, the, the whole of the, the populace, the, the whole of Jake in, in jail is there just me. You know, that would be a gross overestimate, I'd say. Isaiah 62, verse 9. But they that have gathered it shall eat it, and praise the Lord. And they that have brought it together shall drink it in the court of my holiness. And so Jake's finally going to get you know, the fruits of his labor. And a lot of it, it's not going to be hard graph. You know, it's going to be teaching the, na- the, um, the neighbors, the nations, these laws. You know, and putting, again, putting righteousness back in the earth through Yahweh Shai. You know, under King David as well. Verse 10, go through, go through the gates, prepare you the way of the people, cast up, cast up the highway, gather out the stones, lift up the standard for the people. Verse 11, behold the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world, say you to the daughter of Zion, behold thy salvation cometh, behold his reward is with him and his work before him. Verse 12, and they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and thou shalt be called sought out, the city not forsaken. Uh, so at one point, in uh, verse 4, it says, thou shalt no more be termed forsaken. We were, called, we were going to be called a city that isn't forsaken anymore. No, we're going to be brought back, brought back and brought back, because yeah, we were redeemed with the blood of Yahweh Shai. So now we're going to be brought back into the land to be righteous and to fully live no, as an Israelite should. Right. Is Isaiah 63 verse 18. The people of thy holiness have possessed it but a little while. Our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary. We are thine, thou never bearest rule over them. They were not called by thy name. Again, another one I'd forgot. So what it? Sorry. There's one in Baruch I'd like to close on, Lord Willing. Um, and that's, you see, that's the vibration Jake puts out there today. Right, so they're still emulating Jake, but it's mocking or scoffing, if you can hear that in the background. But, you know, that's, that's, that's what Jake pushed out today. There's one in Baruch that talks about um, your enemies on your neck. Wait, wait, no, it's not that slack, it's slack. Um, there it is, both of them slack. So I'll close on the scripture. Come. Baruch chapter 4, verse 25. My children, suffer patiently the wrath that is come upon you from Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, for thine enemy hath persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shall tread upon his neck. Come on, man. We're looking forward to that day, right? With that being said, the shall to the elect, the will honor to the apostles and elders the great millstone, the rule well labor in the word and doctrine. But it's been edifying. All praises to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakhav Ragash. Shalom.